And it is our pleasure to make this an even better Friday. Well, at least I've been me. asking, like, we never make time for him. And I'm like, what's the problem? He played in and won a Super Bowl, caught a touchdown pass. It's our homie, Dennis Pitta. And reveal. Dennis, what up, dog? Hey, Dennis Pitt is on how, the show. How we doing, man? The second greatest number 32 in BYU history. What a reveal. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, second greatest football player, number 32. Well, Todd Christensen, wasn't he Wasn't he 32? Uh, he was in the Raiders with the Raiders. Was Todd 33 was or 32 at BYU? I think he was 33. So I don't I know. You're, you're in the clear, I think. Was he 33? Yeah. Okay. I all think right. you're in the clear. Yeah, I just know you're not number one. We all know Jimmer. We all know Jimmer was better than me. I mean, because yeah. you can totally compare basketball to football. It makes perfect sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for coming hey, on. You man. Guys it was must, good to see you. I was gonna say you guys must be really hurting for content if you're allowing me to come on the show. <laughs> well, well, th this what's week going has on been with BYU basketball. Is it a down year or what's going uh, on? Okay, you know what? Too soon. Uh, too soon. <laughs> Let's start with the, the hard hitting question from last night. Are you done living at your parents' house yet? I know you were building a house. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm done living at my parents' house. We moved into our own home. Yes. The Pittas are homeowners. Thank you very much. Uh, feels good. I am currently at my in-laws' house, sitting in the little corner of our guest bedroom right here. Because um, we are in Arizona this weekend. And you're probably thinking, oh, he's going to the Super Bowl because it's in Arizona. No, I'm going to a wedding tomorrow. So um, I will not be attending the Super Bowl. Here's the thing. When you, like, play in the Super Bowl and you catch a touchdown in the Super Bowl, like, I'm not going to just attend the Super Bowl and park with all the other yahoos and battle all that kind of stuff. <laughs> the rip rip. Stands. I mean, I, I've been accustomed to a certain lifestyle at this point, and I'm not going to just go back and just attend a Super Bowl like everybody else. Like, if you were living in your parents' house, like, maybe you're with the common folk. <laughs> I mean, it felt, yeah, it, it might felt appropriate if I didn't have my own home, but now I'm a homeowner, so yeah. Congratulations. I, uh, I, I'm above all that, of course. Yeah. Can we get Dennis Pitta a suite at the Super Bowl already? I know. My daughter was <laughs> asking on. me about it last night. I go, no way. I go, Vanna, let's look on stuff up right now. The cheapest <laughs> ticket's like 3500 bucks. Come on now. Yeah, it's super yeah. cheap. They're not handing out suites like no. that at the Super Bowl. I don't care who you are. Yeah. Dennis, can you believe it's been basically a decade? I mean, it, since you caught that touchdown in the Super Bowl? Like what? I I I, just, I couldn't believe I was like, has it really been ten years since you played in that game? Um, how do you feel? What are your emotions like every time the Super Bowl rolls around each year? Yeah, it's it it, ha it hasn't felt like ten years, that's for sure. But um, I guess the ten year mark has sunk in a little bit because we've had um, a number of things this year with the Ravens. We had our Super Bowl reunion, our ten year reunion. We went out. Um, back in October and and did a whole weekend where they had a you know Super Bowl party with all the old members of the team and they they did a whole thing at, before the game and at halftime and so we had an awesome weekend being able to to get that group back together and um, you know we had everybody out there Ray Lewis and Ed Reed and, and everybody that was uh, that's since been retired I think the only guys we didn't have there were, were some of the guys that were currently playing which you know it was Joe Flacco and, and Justin Tucker is about the only two so it was awesome to see all of those dudes and, and guys you don't even remember were on the team. I mean, you have like, you know, 60 something guys with practice squad and, and, you know, being able to see those old faces and, and reconnect and talk about all those, those stories and, and all that was awesome. So I've had certainly some time to reflect this year on, on that Super Bowl and, and the fact that it has been 10 years since that happened. And um, it's pretty special. And I think every year you, you get farther away from that game, you appreciate it even more. And uh, being able to look back and, and realize what we accomplished and, and understanding how difficult it is to not only make the Super Bowl, but to win a Super Bowl. Because I've got friends that are still in the league and, and, and trying to get their first Super Bowl. You know, one of my good friends is Kyle Juszczyk, the, the 49ers fullback. And um, they went to a Super Bowl a couple of years ago and they lost. And they, you know, looked like they were uh, set to go back this year and, and then lost. <laughs> In quite a uh, in quite the fashion against the Eagles in, in that NFC Championship game, but it's just such a difficult game to get into, and uh, and certainly one to win. And so I, I appreciate it every year that this time rolls around and, and you see these teams battling to get in it, and know that there's only one winner. The Super Bowl is educational in more ways than one. How would we ever remember Roman numerals without it? And then my uh, question <laughs> for true. you is. 
Do you did you keep the ball? Like in the moment when you catch it, did you give it back to the ref or did you keep it? So I I didn't keep it. And I like the one thing I regret from that game is that moment because I caught the ball and I'm not even thinking about the fact that it's the Super Bowl and I want to keep this ball and, and all that. And so I don't even know what happened to the ball. I chucked the ball and no, I'm jumping up on the linemen and they're celebrating with guys. And, you know, I think we took a 14 zero lead or 14 three lead, something like that at that point. And so we were rolling and we had a ton of momentum and uh, you know, you score a touchdown in the Super Bowl. You're not thinking about anything but celebrating. And um, so I don't know where that ball ended up, but fortunately I don't have to, you know, think of everything myself. One of our equipment guys went and grabbed the ball for me. Nice. Brought it back to our sideline. So I have the ball. It's inscripted with with the Super Bowl, the logo, all those Roman numerals. We were XLV 1-1, Super Bowl 47. Yep. And so that's a lot of that's a lot of Roman numerals. <laughs> I know. There. I was just looking at them like the X for the L means 40, the V means 5, the I, I yeah. means 1-1. One, one. Yeah. Is that yeah, football? I still don't understand it, but <laughs> that's what we were. There's time. There's time. Now, is that football the greatest memento that you own in your collection of everything that you have gathered through your professional career and whatnot? Um, yes, the greatest. Well, no, I take that back. I would say the Super Bowl ring is the greatest uh, memento. Yes. Good call. Yes, that I have. Good call. Um, it's. It's a little bit flashier than the ball, that's for sure. <laughs> but um, the ball's pretty cool. I mean, the, the ball will be proudly displayed in my office once I get everything unpacked. Once you have, we're still set we're up. still in a state of total chaos at yeah. our house. But um, I do have an office, and I have a nice place to display it. So I will. Uh, it will be making its way up on the shelf there shortly. But um, yeah, I would say the Super Bowl ring. I mean, the, the ring is is everything when you win the Super Bowl, and. Uh, but, but you know, the ring's more of a team thing. From an individual standpoint, being yeah. able to have a, a touchdown ball and, and script it and all that, it's pretty cool. Do you wear the ring? Do you break it out? Is it in a case? Like, why don't you have it on right now? Uh, well, I don't have it with me. It's, uh, it's in California. I, uh, I'm in Arizona. But I don't wear it everywhere, shockingly. Um, it's not the... Uh, you know, it's not very inconspicuous when I have it on. It, it stands out quite a bit. I swear to sacrament. It's a little, it's a little loose too. I, I think I had it fitted for my, my right ring finger. Uh huh. Um, and I've lost a little bit of weight since I played, and so it's a little bit loose. My knuckles are less jammed too than when I was playing football all the time. So, um, it's uh yeah, it's um, it's definitely not something I wear all the time. Knuckle jamming Dennis Pitta joins uh, BYU Sports Nation. Um, in terms of the game this week, who, who, you, who you got, Eagles or Chiefs, in this one? Well, I like the Eagles in this game, to be completely honest. I think I'll be rooting for the Chiefs, so I'm a little bit torn. I, I, I lean towards the Eagles because I think the Eagles are better in the trenches. And, and in games like this, when nerves are high and, and the execution in the passing game might not be as crisp as you, you would normally see in most games or whatever, whatever the case, I think the game is always won and lost in the trenches. And the Eagles have one of the best offensive lines in the whole league, if not the best, um, and defensively on the defensive line, you know, one of the best. And so I think in a game like this, I think the, the team that controls the line of scrimmage the best is going to win. And, and that would be the Eagles for me. But Again, I, I'm an Andy Reid, you know, fan and, and um, you know, Mahomes and, and the style of football that they play is just so appealing and, and so fun to watch. And so I'll probably be rooting for the Chiefs, but if, if I'm going to pick and put money on anything, which I'm not, uh, it would be the Eagles. Dennis Pitt is with us on BYU Sports Nation. It is Super Bowl week, and we have had a number of Super Bowl performers join us, including Chad Lewis, another former BYU tight end. Dennis, we talked to Chad about his emotions, and he was on the losing side with the Eagles under Andy Reid, and he kind of talked about how difficult that was. But he also discussed making the transition from the chaos of the week into the actual game and how difficult that can be. How were you and the Ravens able to do that? With just the, It is a circus at media day. That's the best way I can explain it. Until you, it's crazy. But then you got to go play a game, and 
block out all the distractions. How were you and the Ravens able to do that? Yeah, it's not easy because there's a ton of distractions. And you know, the first, you know, the first week, because you have a two week gap between the championship games and, and the Super Bowl, the first week is very normal. You're at your facility, you go through a normal week of practice, there's not much media. It's a very standard structured week. And then you get to the host site. And for us, it was New Orleans, which in itself is is crazy. But <clears throat> you're there, and, and the first probably three or four days you're there, it's the media frenzy is insane. And you have these blocked out media times where you're sitting up on a podium and you have millions of people asking you questions from everywhere. From I, I can't tell you how many interviews I did in, in Spanish. You have all these Mexican <laughs> TV uh, stations that are up there. And somehow they found out that I went on a Spanish-speaking mission and spoke Spanish. And so I'm doing interview after interview in Spanish. And so everybody that's been on a, a Spanish-speaking mission or a foreign language mission, you, you know um, you know, a lot of terms. <laughs> they don't play football in the Dominican Republic. <laughs> I did not know a lot of the football terms oh, yeah. in Spanish. So I really struggled in those interviews. And so, I mean, I could have talked about the gospel all day long with those reporters, but they were asking me football-specific questions, and that was very difficult to answer. I did not have... <laughs> I did not have the vocabulary in Spanish for football. And so uh, I did a bunch of those. I remember at one point I'm up on the podium and, and I have Boy Scouts of America are there asking me, of course, I was an Eagle Scout. Of course. And so they're yeah. asking me to tie all these different knots and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> at one point I had, I had a wig with purple hair on it. I mean, <laughs> I don't even know what happened, but it, it's crazy. You know, Food Network is there asking, like Food Network. I didn't even know they, they knew what the Super Bowl was over there. <laughs> And, you know, they're, uh, you know, they're asking you questions on the podium. So it's, it is just crazy. And you also get a sense during that week of how big the Super Bowl is. When you have media outlets from all these different countries, from all these different networks, you know, things that don't even pertain to sports, and they're there interviewing you. I mean, it's a big deal. And it, so reality sets in a little bit that second week, like, oh, holy crud, this is a big deal. And this is an important game, and everybody's going to be watching. And so it puts even more pressure on you. And your anxiety levels go up a little bit more. Um, and it's it's a nerve-wracking week for sure. And uh, and so you just you just deal with it. You do it. And, and fortunately, we did it apparently pretty well. I don't know what our secret was, but we came out and we were on fire at the beginning of that game. And then anybody who remembers that game will remember we went up 28 to 6. We returned the opening kickoff of the second half to go up 28-6. Had all the momentum in the world. We're ready to just run away with the thing. And uh, Roger Goodell and the NFL turned the lights off in the Superdome. <laughs> hey, that Bill. And killed our momentum. And uh, football is such a game of momentum. And so, uh, you know, for, for 45 minutes, we were sitting on the field with no lights. And the lights came back on. We got a brief period to warm up. And then we were back in the game. And, and that's when the 49ers grabbed the momentum and, and, and stormed back into that game and made it a game. Unfortunately, we, we held on for the win. But um, what a crazy... And I was, I, I've done a ton of interviews the last couple of weeks with, with um, Ravens um, radio people and all kinds of different stuff because, you know, th this is the 10-year reunion, like sure. I mentioned before, for that game. And so there's, there's a lot of stories being told out there. And so um, I was just saying the other day about this game in particular, um, what was so difficult about that 45-minute delay and just how that game played out is our offense, I think the last time we took the field in that game was in the second quarter with like two minutes left and we were off the field. And then you have an extended halftime because of the halftime show. So a normal NFL halftime is like 10 minutes. This was like a 30 minute halftime, which, you know, three times longer, which is crazy. So you have a 30 minute halftime. And then we came out, we returned the opening kick. We were supposed to get the ball back. Um, and then they get the ball. I think they ran a couple of plays. It was third down, the lights go out. So it had been about a two hour to a two and a half hour time period. Wow. Between the last time our offense took the field and when we finally were able to get back on. And in the course of a game, especially the Super Bowl, a two and a half hour time a break in a game, like it, it's a completely different game at that point. And I think that was what was most difficult for us to handle. And so we made a couple of mistakes when we came back out offensively. And I think we had a fumble and, you know, defensively we missed some tackles. Anyways, that game was just was crazy for that blackout. I mean, how, I've never been in a game where there was <laughs> the lights went out ever. High school, peewee football. I mean, what you name it. And in the Super Bowl, in the biggest game of the entire year, the lights go out for 45 minutes. I mean, 
You tell me what happened. Why you tell me you? if that was accident or not. <laughs> the conspiracy theorist, Dennis Pitta, <laughs> with this BYU Sports Nation. As we say goodbye, I'm going to need you to do a couple of things. I'm going to need you to look up encroachment and illegal procedure in Spanish so that you're better prepared for those interviews next time. <laughs> I do not know those words. Still today, I don't know any of those words. I know that touchdowns are true. You know? Uh, Dennis, great to catch Encrocho, up with you. Encrocho, I think that's what I said. <laughs> it's great to catch up with you. Awesome stories. Uh, enjoy the wedding tomorrow in Arizona and the Super Bowl over the weekend. We'll talk again soon, man. All right, thanks, guys. Appreciate you making time for me. You got it. He is a Super Bowl champion. I know. I've been telling the production team, I'm like, why don't we have Dennis on more often? He's great. Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs>